sorry, I'm doing uh, things a little backwards here. So um, I'm a little further along over here, so don't pay attention over here. Pay attention to here. Um, this is just an intro to part five of uh, my video series on uh, setting up a Thorns TD160 uh, Mark I turntable, an early version. Um, this one we're going to go over basically um, changing out the arm uh, from the bent arm that you saw at the end of the last video. Uh, this, this part was uh, bent. You can see the new one's already on, so I'm giving everything away here. Um, balancing the, uh, the springs on the, uh, the turntable, that's why it's all elevated. And uh, it's a very long video, but uh, um, use the slider, fast forward, if it's uh, too long and too boring. You can jump through sections that way. I just didn't want to leave anything out. Uh, if, if it's too long, I might even have to parse it out into, uh, into uh, uh, another part or something like that. So um, I haven't done editing yet on it, so uh, I might be able to uh, shave some time off of it and everything uh, without losing any content. Um, what else did I do? So uh, yeah, we uh, disassembled the arm, pulled the arm out. Um, we uh, re-lubricated, flipped it over uh, upside down. We had to uh, rewire the arm. Um, and then uh, you'll see all of that in this, uh, this video coming up. And very interesting for those that uh, want to learn how to uh, balance things. I will say that at the very end of this, where I go through uh, the balancing portion of the springs, my camera kept cutting off and I had to try to regroup. And I wasn't sure how much I lost, so it'll be a bit disjointed. But if you watch the whole thing, you'll sort of get the idea of what I, what I was trying to get across. It just didn't come across sequentially uh, quite the way I wanted it. But uh, uh, I didn't want to spend more time <laughs> re-recording it. It takes longer to actually do these videos than to actually sit down and do the turntable. I would have been done by now, but uh, I wanted to share some of this with, uh, with you folks. And certainly anything that I do is not the absolute correct way. Uh, it's the way I do it. Um, I've done a lot of reading and had a bit of experience with these tables, but, uh, but there are certainly more uh, experts, people that are more expert than I, uh, even though I've worked on quite a few of these now. Um, so take everything I say with a grain of salt and uh, Hopefully you enjoy this video and you learn some uh, some things. I actually learned some new tricks on how to feed the wires through the tube, uh, setting up the bearings. Um, I'm going to save the uh, the bearing uh, portion to the very end. I keep talking about it and you'll find out. Uh, but I ran out of time, so I think I'm going to do a part six and, and just set the bearing up. I think it's pretty well set up well anyway, but I'll go through the motions and show how it's done anyway. So uh, with that, Hopefully you enjoy this uh, this part of the uh, video series on the 160. Okay, now I've got the arm out. It's just uh, two set screws in the uh, the base of uh, this here, which allows you to adjust the uh, VTA if uh, you're so inclined to do such things. Um, so uh, we're not going to monkey with this thing, which is the uh, anti-skate. Uh, we don't want to get that off of skew here. I don't think there's any way you can actually. But uh, so here's your uh, your gimbaled bearings here, and you've got uh, two bearings on each two uh, uh, bearing points on each side here on the horizontal axis, and then you've got on the vertical axis you've got this bearing this uh, bearing basically holding it in place uh, between the two there, so that it's pivoting on those two. Um, but allows to go up and down and allows uh, actually a horizontal movement. Uh, and then the two horizontally placed uh, bearings allow for a vertical up and down of the, uh, of the tone arm assembly. Okay, so, uh, so these ones are easy. They just use little uh, small flathead uh, uh, screws uh, in order to uh, set in place the uh, the bearing points that uh, you see right here on the replacement arm. You can see these really fine pointed conical uh, bearing uh, points there. And this little rail actually goes on the top 
and uh, sets in place, uh, provides a, uh, a stopper for uh, in the vertical direction, which you can see right there. That acts, that little uh, rail across there acts as a stopper. And there's this little teeny wire with a little brass uh, fitting with a uh, fitting on the end of it that actually um, goes into this uh, position here. So we'll have to uh, figure that one out. It actually goes in on the side there. So uh, there's a little groove if you see right in here, and that's where that little brass fitting slides in with a very hairline thin sort of fishing wire um, attaching to the inside of this tube here. So, um, so yeah, we'll do this. And then the, uh, for the, this uh, bearing, it's got an odd, uh, on my other one, it actually has a flathead screw similar to these in order to undo it, but for whatever reason they went to uh, this two pin thing. And I've got a, uh, a watch making a dealio here, a tool with different tips that I think will make uh, make a good little uh, uh, sort of driver to uh, open that uh, that up. I'll just have to find it here. Uh, I've got it, I think it's in my cupboard here, so I'll be back. Here's the uh, tool I was talking about. It's a uh, watchmaker's tool. Uh, it's a case opener for waterproof watches. And uh, there's these little nipples here on the end, and uh, there's replaceable nipples depending on the size of your uh, notches in the back of your watches. And then you just adjust this uh, to adjust the distance apart. So we'll adjust that, and hopefully we can. It will go close enough that uh, it will work on this thing. And fingers are crossed. It's gonna be close. Oh, and it's too, too large but we may be able to make it work well maybe not well that's a bummer they made this wheel here too thick so it can only get so close it's made for watches not really for this kind of a, a dealio but uh, I also have another tool that I think I can use it's a, a circlip thing that I can with uh, bent uh, fingers um, that I can use to uh, adjust that as well so let me uh, let me come back and see if that one works. So as luck would have it, I think that circlip tool that I have is out on my boat where I have a big uh, a tool kit for uh, working on my boat to keep it, uh, keep it at sea. Anyway, um, so I found uh, two other solutions that work just as effectively. I have a nice uh, curved set of uh, needle nose pliers, which you can see right here. And basically all you do is hold the, uh, the needle nose pliers and the, the, the tips on these are fine enough that I actually can get into those two holes that you can see on that uh, uh, bearing nut or bearing uh, screw or whatever. And then you can just turn it that way. And then once you get it loose, then you can just finger undo it. The other tool I found that's uh, just as effective is this uh, uh, protractor or compass or whatever you call it. Or protractor, I think they're called. And then you can turn it out this way. This one's kind of a flimsy one, but uh, I like this tool better. But you can get one of these things for uh, chart, chart keeping or uh, uh, geometry kind of thing in a geometry kit. And that will allow you to adjust it. You just want to be careful you don't scratch it with the, you know, the tips. That's why I like this one better. It's a duller thing and you're not going to accidentally scratch the, uh, even though it's there's a cap on it, so it doesn't really matter even if you do scratch it. Nobody will see it. So you just sort of unscrew it that way and uh, first we'll uh, do the bearing points and well let's do this one first let's take this one off and I can see it's starting to flop already I think we may be Okay, I might even only need to do the other two bearing points. It's starting to get a lot of play there. Yeah, 
a lot of up and down play. You may not need to do, undo that one totally. Let's do these ones first. Take these out. And then what I'll do is I'll clean them with isopropyl alcohol, get the old grease off and put some good, uh, good lubricating oil on those. Just don't want to do anything roughly because you don't want to damage the, uh, the, bearing, the bearings on these things. So I'm just totally removing them. I got a little magnet thing there to prevent it from uh, getting lost. That's one part out. In fact, once the one is out, you can take the whole thing out. And it's just basically getting these wires up, I think. Because uh, it looks like it will come out. Now those uh, wires are creating quite a bit of resistance, but uh, well, and the other part of it too is you want to make sure that this, before you start tugging on it, these are nice grips here and we'll remove, let's see. I have to probably go back and watch my video on how I did the other one just to make sure I don't damage this. Because there is a fine little wire that goes through a little channel guide here. But the brass thing, I think, is inside there. Uh, yeah, let me get back to you. i got to just look this thing up again before I start wrecking things. Right back. All right, I had a good look, watch the uh, the old video and what I did on the uh, the previous arm. Uh, it was a couple of years ago, so I uh, have uh, don't have good memory of it. But uh, you have this little collar here that's removable. You just unscrew this little screw on the bottom here, and then this whole arm tube will come through this. And this little wire actually hooks up to the anti skating. It's kind of a lever arm for adjusting your uh, not anti-skating, sorry, but your uh, tracking force uh, dial. It's up here. That's what it hooks into. Um, and without having to take that all apart, if I wanted to, you know, I could do this as an assembly. But why would I do that when this tracking force assembly is all assembled? I can just take this off, and then I can use this collar with this old arm. So I'll take that one off and have a spare. And so if that wire, little wire ever snapped, I have another one. And uh, we'll use the one that's in place, which is working just fine. They're identical. Um, so what I'll do is I'll unscrew this, and I can slide the arm out. I'm going to unscrew the one that's on here. You can see the screw right there. And then I can slide that collar off, and I'll use this, co the, this collar on this arm. And that way I don't have to reassemble the whole anti-skating mechanism here, and I don't have to take this bearing out any further. Um, and have everything sort of go kablooey on me. So that is a good uh, compromise. So uh, what we'll do is we'll pick it up from there and uh, I'm going to link uh, both the procedure for balancing the arm but as you can see with the arm too look at how bent that, uh, that uh, bullet receiver is, that uh, bayonet mount is for this arm if you can see it uh, on that angle. It's bent quite a bit down, so uh, it's a good thing that we're uh, we're taking this thing out of action and uh, putting a, a new one that's uh, nice and straight, as you can see there. So you can see the difference in uh, curvature. So uh, this will be a good thing. Okay, so back to uh, time lapse. Okay, there I removed it, and uh, when you're removing the collar, the collar is sitting on here. Uh, you don't want to push it through, otherwise you could hyperextend that uh, that um, tracking force dial wire, which is very, 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 very fine. Uh, in this case, um, what you do is you push that collar forward here, and then you slide the tube out through the assembly uh, this way, instead of trying to push this 
you know, it around the crook because you could actually end up breaking that uh, that assembly. So uh, there's the old one to be put away for posterity. I don't know if there's any other usable parts on there. Uh, we could try, I might try on a, on a vise is to bend it back to true and that way I'll have a nice ba backup arm. I'll do it very carefully so I don't snap anything and uh, and uh, and then I'll use a uh, a spirit level basically to uh, make sure it is true and then I can use that as a spare arm. And I do have another spare arm uh, that has just a little ding there but and it's perfectly straight I just didn't want to have the ding uh, showing on my nice uh, main system turntable. So, so there we go that was uh, easy enough so here so I'll show you what I meant on the, the last one. So I use a fine tooth or fine uh, uh, flathead screwdriver and you just unscrew this. It's a long uh, sort of pointy, kind of looks like a wood screw, screw that comes out of the bottom. You can see that. Hopefully I'm doing it on camera. I can't always see what I'm filming and watch what I'm doing at the same time here. So you remove that and you can see the little screw that comes out of there. Like I say, it's like a little wood screw, but it's uh, into the uh, tube of the back tube here. Now when you're inside the, uh, the bearing, the gimbal bearing portion, you don't want to bring the, this piece out this way, as I mentioned. You want to actually slide this. You can see the little wire there. You want to actually slide this through this way and then bring the whole arm out through this way. Um, and that way you won't hyperextend this uh, very, very fine uh, wire or fi a fishing line kind of uh, attachment that goes into this uh, tube and, and attaches to your um, tracking force dial. So, and as you can see, it's already in place there. And see how the, uh, the little wire is just kind of hanging on? And then there's a little slot it goes through. So when we put this back, we're going to go back in the same way. This looks like it has a little bit of lubrication on it. So we're going to clean that up. We use a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol on it just to get rid of some of that grease. Now this does not, it's not a sliding mechanism on this part other than uh, having the, uh, the dial or the weight the counterweight which slides up and down so a little bit of lube on there is a good idea but uh, this part that was the only part that was lubed and it actually is a fixed part so you just want to make sure you got a little bit of you know uh, oil on here not much and that way you can get a nice slide for the uh, your counterweight so we're going to clean this off and then we'll Relube it when I get the uh, get to putting the counterweight back on. So that's getting rid of all the old sticky grease that's on it. So I just hit it with isopropyl alcohol, a nice clean rag. It doesn't leave any kind of lint or anything behind. And you see where the wires come out and where the um, the grounding strap is to the uh, to the actual tone arm itself, tone arm tube. These are going to the head shell. Um, those go on the bottom. So you're going to slide this through this mechanism here, with this device on there, and we're going to not ding up these bearings, wreck the points on them. You're going to just do this very carefully. Give you an idea to get these all lean forward. These have got to go through that down tube eventually. So there. And these, can you see there? So I'm getting all the bundled, the wires bundled together to go through here. Be very careful not to tug on any of the wires because these are very delicate wires. And uh, make sure they all come through. You kind of want to have them all together so you don't want to have them all willy-nilly because these can actually affect your uh, anti-skating by tugging so you want to have them sort of loosely 
uh, through there. And then we're going to slowly advance this through. Get everything through, including the bearings. And then this goes back on. I'm not going to do anything up until I can get those wires through the tube. You can see how this thing has to line up. Now I can see why they had a little bit of grease on there to get, uh, get this to slide through. So we will do that. There, uh, I forgot to push play on the camera, but what I did was I put a little bit of uh, jewelers uh, oil on there just to uh, make sure that uh, it's a little bit lubricated so I can slide it up and over. I'm going to get all these wires together because they're bunching up around here. Okay. There, it goes on nicely. We don't want to tug on it because we don't want to snap that little that lead wire that goes to the uh, tracking force thing. Okay, there it's all lined up. And we're going to use our little screw here that we took off that I showed you. And our little screwdriver. And get that in place. I'm not going to drive it completely home. I might need to take that off if I'm having problems getting feeding these wires down that tube. That's going to be an interesting one, is getting them all down that tube, because with more wires, even though they're thinner, it might uh, bung up going down the uh, this tube here. They've got to come out here. So you got to feed them all the way down. So how to do that? First of all, we need better light. It's going to be bright in the camera, but uh, I need to be able to see. Oh, there we go. And then I'm going to probably, I was kind of thinking, should I feed them all together as one? Or should I feed them individually through? All right, folks, uh, what I did was I got a longer piece of shrink tubing because this was too short and it was just kept, kept pulling out. And uh, I went a greater length so it has more biting power on the, uh, on the thing and on the wires. So what we're going to do is feed it through. You don't want to take all of the pressure there. I did a little drop of crazy glue at the end, just where there was no other wires, just um, just so it, it, it would sort of pull a bit better, I guess. So I don't know if that, but I want to feed it kind of through as well as pull. So that way I don't actually leave the shrink tubing in the tube. That may not work. Seems to be coming. And there it goes. Wow. Maybe the shrink tubing is a little too long. Oh no, I got it right. <laughs> just right just enough so now what I want to do is pull the shrink tubing apart without damaging the wires and that's going to be the tricky part so what I'm going to do is start it with a little razor knife here on the end where there's no wire it's just the uh, there. And hopefully we don't damage the, uh, that's the tricky part. Oh, there we go. Once you get it started, then it just peels right out.
And there we go. And I'm already sensing that the lead wires on this toner are not long enough. So we may have to do some, uh, use the old lead toner, toner wires, which are much longer, as you can see. That's pretty chintzy of them. Pretty sure the other one I didn't have to do that. So these lead wires are way too short. So that's not ideal. But we got them through. So I can always reuse some of the length of this and uh, I'll have to uh, solder them uh, end to end and put some shrink tubing on. Yeah, we'll see. I don't want to make them way too much either. So that's in there perfectly. So now what I can do is I can uh, screw this down properly. Yeah, I'm not happy about that. That's how it came from the uh, Thorns factory in Switzerland. They bought all the new old, old stock when the, uh, the factory closed and this was one of those, those items. So now what we've got to do is make sure that the other bearing, so I didn't touch the other bearing, I just touched this side. And so we've got to make sure this bearing is in, in its place without damaging the cone and Once again, I had uh, <coughs> the video, I paused the video and then forgot to start it. But uh, anyway, I've got the, uh, the bearings in and uh, not a lot of play in them, but uh, they still need to be adjusted, but I'm not going to adjust them, or further fine tune them until they're actually um, on the arm and mounted and everything. Um, yeah, the... Uh, very little play. I think I've got it pretty close, but I still need to uh, cinch down one of these to uh, uh, make sure it uh, it works properly. Yeah, no play, but it's very fluid. And I've got this one cinched down too. So I figured out why um, these lead wires are short. On the later runs, and I. Uh, Went back and looked at the uh, the video where I did uh, the uh, my TD one hundred and sixty, which is a uh, a newer version. Here you can see the serial number of this arm zero 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 five eight six two. Um, I don't know if you can read that. There you go. Um, what it is is on the uh, newer uh, TD one hundred and sixty, the later runs of the uh, the Mark one. They uh, had the uh, junction block for the um, RCA to um, the tone arm lead wires was actually right below the um, where the uh, tone arm mounts, uh, the tone arm mounting board, and so the uh, so the lead wires didn't need to be as long on uh, on the newer run. So this uh, tone arm is actually from the uh, the newer run of uh, turntables. It's exactly the same, it's just it didn't have the longer lead wires because on here 
the mounting block is on the back, so this is the back of the turntable, is uh, somewhere over here. So you have to get the wires all the way over to that mounting block where uh, the block connects to the, uh, to the RCA jacks. So there's one of two things I could do. I could either move the mounting block closer so I don't have to have a break in the line, or what I'm going to do, or what I could do is, uh, but then of course there's hardware for mounting that mounting block and that could get, uh, get a little bit dicey. Um, so, or what I can do is I can uh, uh, take a couple of these lead wires and uh, or all of these lead wires and take enough length to get me over there and then just uh, extend the extend them and uh, try not to uh, uh, get any breaks in the line or whatever. Uh, either one it's not ideal but uh, it is what it is. That's unfortunately the arm that they sent me and uh, I don't want to tear this all apart and rewire because they're is a potential that uh, you could actually uh, screw up this connection here. There's a pin that comes out here. You can pull it out and you can rewire it that, that way. Some people do it to do Litz wires or whatever. Uh, but it has a certain amount of risk. You can actually brick the, t brick the tone arm by uh, proper, improperly taking it apart and uh, breaking that, uh, that connector that's in there. And it has to be perfectly aligned. Otherwise, the, uh, the head shell won't properly mate up to it. So I think um, going with the extended wire option is going to be my only real choice here. Uh, but I'll have a look at the, the, the block in there and see if it is movable. And uh, we'll see what we can do. So we're going to feed these down, these wires down through. And then and bring it up and I've had a measurement actually I used one of these tools and it was the perfect measurement for the distance above so we plug that down Ooh, and uh, alas the set screw is almost out so we don't want to lose that set screw so we're going to hold it right there and then that will be the same exact VTA that was on it previously. Now this actually, i got to go look at my other turntable and see the orientation. So you also, also have to make sure this is oriented oriented correctly and I think it comes off at an angle about that. Be right back. I'm going to double check because it actually goes forward a bit. It's almost at a 45 degree angle to the uh, to the block assembly so using the mark one eyeball initially but this can be always adjusted later if there's a problem it's not rocket science and making sure my height is correct You don't want to tighten these so much that you strip them, but they need to be nice and nice and snug. If you strip these, then you got to go and find some set screws somewhere, which would be a bugger. And there we go. You can see there is a little bit of play, so we still have to adjust those uh, bearings a little bit. But we'll do that once the. Uh, we can do that now, I guess. I think. Which is the one? Yeah, that was the one. So the set bolt, you want to make sure you're spinning it but not spinning this too thick because otherwise you'll lose the bearing out of there again. And what you didn't see was I put a little, little drop of oil, uh, jeweler's oil inside of each of those uh, bearing uh, receptacles just so I 
make sure it's well lubricated. <sighs> that seems to be good. And we'll do the uh, we'll do the uh, procedures for uh, tuning the uh, the bearing here pretty soon. Okay, so I got it the way I like it. Pretty sure that noise is actually inside there. That's not in the bearing. Bearing is solid, nice and fluid. There we go. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong angle. Once again, I'm more focused on doing the work than I am showing you people. So what I ended up doing was uh, I cinched down this uh, top bearing uh, screw. And not too much, but uh, just enough so that it's no longer, no longer any play in the bearing. And uh, so we've got really good light left-right mo motion, very fluid. And up down is good, and then I just hold the thing and, and notice there's no shake or rattle or anything. Only when it's in here I can make a rattle, but that's just rattling here. So there we go. I think the bearing is really good. But again, we'll do the uh, we'll just do the confirmation checks on my little checklist here, which is this procedure here: tone arm bearing adjustment on thorns TP16 arms. And showing you basically how to uh, adjust the play in the arm. There we go. So now we can uh, start focusing on what we're going to do on the underside and getting the uh, the wires connected up. So there you see the dilemma, where I have short leads, and uh, on my other Thorns turntable, the uh, the connection block assembly for uh, connecting the RCA wires that comes up through this line goes into this block on this side on the outside here and the lead wires on the old arm came all the way over here and connected up on this block assembly well in the uh, newer uh, Mark 1 uh, turntables the later run I guess of them that block assembly was actually right here underneath the uh, the tone arm pivot point so you didn't need a long lead in order to uh, run the wires and that's probably what they found was um, these wires actually act as a um, sort of a spring uh, to uh, anti-skating so the longer you have a lead of wire there's more weight to it, it applies uh, some forces to the tone arm and it can uh, screw your uh, weighting, uh, skew your weighting um, of the arm and the uh, anti-skate uh, uh, balance and everything. But, um, not such a big deal. What we can do is we can, I'm going to end up using probably these, these are the only lead wires I have right now, or these ones. So I'll figure out a distance, which is about that much. A little bit for, you want to have some, you don't want to have it just a straight run. You want to actually have it come across to the wall here. I'm going to put a, uh, an anchor point here. And then uh, we'll connect it up and I will have a connection point. But uh, I can use a um, very, 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 very small amount of, uh, of uh, shrink tubing, I guess, to uh, mate the wires and uh, see if we can make that work. Ideally I would run, run wires but uh, I, you know it's just too much of a risk on these old arms to uh, uh, run new lead wires all the way through the arm and take everything apart and then, then of course you can bung things up. So this I think is the second best solution. Uh, you can see still some of the powder that's on the, uh, the springs as I showed you uh, quite a while ago now on how to uh, clean the springs and everything so they're holding up good. Uh, they need to be adjusted um, as I mentioned before but uh, let's see what we can do. Now trying to get a good camera angle for this is going to be difficult because my tripod is not that great so 
Uh, I'll probably have to explain it as I go here. So, more to follow. All right, that wasn't so terribly hard. Uh, it's very finicky and fussy work, but uh, so we've got the uh, extension wires hooked on, and I just used a little bit of a very, 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 very small um, shrink wrap uh, just on the hot cables. Uh, ground I just left open, that, uh, but they don't touch the hot. That's why I use the shrink wrap. And, uh, and then we have the ground lead that goes to the right uh, leg there, so we will check continuity before I slap it all together again. And what I did was I taped it here as a temporary fix because, uh, as you know, I mentioned I'm going to change out this plinth to a better plinth. So this is going on to a different turntable. So once I get to the other plinth, I'll put a better fastener there than a, just a piece of uh, electrical tape. But that'll only be there for maybe a week or so. So. Uh, we should have the uh, tone arm wired now, and uh, we're going to flip her upside down, and uh, we're going to start looking at the spring. So what, what I'm going to do is put it back upside down on these cans here. I put the uh, cloth on it just so it doesn't scratch the, uh, the nice finish on the, uh, the top plate. And uh, what we'll do, use an 8 millimeter bolt. Uh, driver basically to adjust these springs uh, to get the suspension uh, we'll do that after I get the uh, I do the um, the bearing adjustments and uh, we'll hopefully get this thing springing really nice for uh, for the weight and everything so it's not hitting or uh, coming close to the uh, the protection post that I put in and uh, yeah so now we have a, uh, I'm pretty sure, so the other thing is we put this as a strain, strain release so this doesn't have any tension on the tone arm. And I spread the wires out so that uh, it evens out any kind of tension that is on the, on the, uh, the tone arm. So um, yeah, that should, uh, should work good. Um, I don't think we'll have to do a grounding mod. There is a grounding mod that allows you to uh, uh, electrically fasten this uh, suspension plate to the other. Uh, most turntables don't need it, but uh, if that need, if, if there is some hum or anything like that, we can always do that, you know, with these bolts here, we can run a, a grounding strop or something like that, but uh, I don't think we'll need that. So, there we go. And there you can see that uh, I've got it uh, flipped upside down still on the cans, that way I'll be able to access the uh, the suspension bolts as I uh, as I trim that at that point um, what we're going to do is put the uh, the platter on we'll put the lube back in um, into the uh, into the main bearing the platter bearing um, and we'll get everything balanced out with the uh, with the belt on and uh, 
We'll also play with the uh, with the uh, bearings. I, I think I nailed it. I mean, I think that is so smooth, and there's no play. Um, I think I, I nailed it. And we'll put the uh, the Q arm lever, lever back on. Test that. Make sure it's uh, lowering properly. And we're getting close. We're getting so close. So hopefully we'll have a playing turntable here pretty quick. All right, I just did a rough test on uh, on the bearing, and uh, so I put uh, fluid in as I did before, and uh, without the belt on, I spun it up. Now this is not a scientific method, as everybody will point out, because I don't know the RPM that I started with, but uh, I could have just put it on 45 and then timed it, but I just spun it up as you know as as good as as I could with the finger. And let it run until it stopped, and it was uh, just over five and a half minutes. So uh, um, I could probably eke out a little bit more. I think I could put a little more uh, uh, bearing oil into the uh, bearing well, but uh, I think that's adequate. And uh, very happy with uh, with how that turned out. So uh, next, what we're going to do is uh, focus a little more on the uh, the tone arm here, and. Uh, get the um, bearing just uh, just right. I think I'm there, but uh, I just want to make sure it's uh, in accordance with the, uh, the procedure. So, we'll follow. Right, so uh, I decided before carrying on, I would uh, try to level this up. And I noticed that the table is fairly level. There's a little bit of an angle to it, not much, but I think that's because I've got a dissimilar size can here. Uh, I only had two of the same kind of cans and uh, whatnot. So I'm going to try to even this up as best I can. So I need to go this way. Oh, that's exactly what I need. So that's the odd size can right there. Or that's the odd size can. That's higher, so that's why it's a little low on that side. So what I'm going to do is try to find some sort of spacer to differentiate this side here. So I'm going to use a popsicle stick. There. And that makes it just about bang on. Maybe a little bit more on this side. Yeah, that's it. Popsicle stick and a bullet bang on uh, level on my platter. If you can see the, uh, the the table actually. Hang on. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to level this. So the table's level and the spirit level, now my bubble is actually off center by that. So these, these uh, spirit levels here are great because it gives you an idea of fore and aft and uh, in 2, 2D basically whether your, uh, your surface is level or not. And clearly the uh, turntable platter is not. And the way you can you can do a spirit level, or what I use is a nice little uh, ruler. This was actually for my unexploded explosive ordnance program, but uh, 
Uh, these are handy little rulers and I want to get my same millimeters of distance from the deck of the even and flat uh, surface of the turntable to the edge of the platter. So right here I'm reading about 8 millimeters and over here it's 5 millimeters and here it's really low at four and a half to four millimeters. So when I spin it, you can actually hear, well, I've got the, the, the belt on, so it's not spinning as easily, but it actually is very close to that uh, protection rod. So what I need to do is I need to elevate this side of the table and get it all level and probably lower this side. It's a little too high. And then I want to get the bounce that uh, we'll show you. And you can tell that it's, uh, it's incorrect. It's actually so, sort of sloped this way just because of the uh, tone arm uh, thing here. It should be all, near flush. It does not always end up being flush. It depends on your springs. But uh, it's quite clearly sort of loaded this way. Uh, this way. So um, this, end, this side is higher than this side is what I'm trying to get at. So what I use is an 8 millimeter nut driver. I just pulled that out of a, uh, a wrench set. So uh, it's European, so it's all metric here. Not, uh, not inches and eighth inches and all that stuff, but uh, 8 millimeters. And there's three uh, springs that we uh, did the cleaning of. Now we're going to adjust the nut on the end of those springs to tighten or loosen to get this platter completely dead even with the, uh, the, the plinth uh, level and the floor level just to make sure it's nice and parallel to the, uh, the floor or the uh, top top part of the plinth. So we're gonna put the driver in and I know this side is high so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start driving this turning this so it drops it. You can actually see it dropping. So you got a tripod here because you got three springs and it's fairly easy to uh, level out and pretty sure it's three, six or seven. Let's go to, let's go to six. So we got six there. I'm going to have to get my face into here just to Got the little eye on this side, so we're going to adjust this spring. Six. And this side is going to have to come up, for sure. six and of course if I raise that in this this side will dip so you got to sort of do it back and forth until you get it the way you like it and then once you then you can put the spirit level on oh and it's very close Well, once again, I caught myself uh, talking to myself. Um, I did this whole sequence of uh, setting up the springs, uh, went about it, and uh, was explaining the whole thing, and I realized I didn't push record. <laughs> so here's uh, sort of a, in a nutshell, what, I, what I'm doing. So um, what I did was, I used a spirit level, basically to make, make sure that the plinth top is completely flat all the way around. Um, this is a, a metal sheet, and if it's not put on properly, it could have waves. This one is actually really good. So if I measure with a, I use one of these types of spirit levels. So it's not just uh, side to side, whether it's level, it's also up in sort of in, uh, in all uh, axes, X and Y axes. 
uh, in two, D, two, two dimensions. Um, and you want to make sure that the bubble is in the bullseye all the way around. And it is for the base. So the base here is parallel with the floor uh, when the bullet, when the bubble is in the center of the bullet there. And I've got it to that point. You can't really see it. Maybe I can uh, take the camera off and show. Um, and then when I did that, uh, because I hadn't adjusted, I just cleaned the springs, put the springs on, but I didn't adjust them. Um, this was way out of whack. The, uh, the platter should be parallel with the top of the plinth, the top plate of the plinth, and also parallel with the floor. And it wasn't. It was actually elevated in one side. So this, this side was elevated, and this side was lower. Was When I was spinning it, it was actually rubbing against the top of that uh, protection post. Another re good reason to have that protection post by the motor. So if you don't have one, you can either easily make one out of uh, parts you can get at a hardware shop or, or you can 3D print like I did or there's many options of uh, make, making one to the right dimensions. So, uh, so there's three springs. So it's essentially a tripod here. It's a uh, suspension turntable. So uh, this platter assembly and the arm are all connected together and they're suspended by three springs. There's a spring basically here, here, and over here. Um, so if that's uneven, you adjust the springs. So there's three nuts on the end of the, uh, uh, the spring posts at the very bottom. And what I use is an eight millimeter nut. Uh, these are metric uh, turntables. Obviously they're made in Europe, so they're metric, not, uh, you don't use uh, imperial type of uh, wrenches or anything. So it's an eight millimeter nut that are on these and you go around and you adjust them. And what I do is I use both the spirit level and I use a ruler. And I cut this ruler off so that it's zero right at the very bottom. And I was shooting for about six millimeters all the way around. And that's kind of half the battle. You get it to the, that point where, you know, it's all six millimeters around because it's a tripod. It's very easy to do. Um, but you may find that it's a little bit out of whack. So you use your spirit, spirit level also focusing on is my platter mat flat or is it rippled? I don't know how much of that I got. The camera keeps shutting off on me. Maybe somebody's phoning me or something. It keeps kicking me out or whatever. But, uh, Anyway, I'm going to go back and see how I got this, but I got the suspension to where I want it. So you're going one, about uh, a label distance in, and you're going to adjust it as a system, so up and down until you get to the proper balance, and that's exactly what you're looking for right there. See how it just up and down is not jiggling or anything? Um, eight millimeter bolt to uh, adjust them from the inside. I normally go to, so we're really at about I'd say five and a half millimeters for this turntable. It de depends on how big your springs are. And then just go back and do a quick little check of your bubbles. Make sure everything's, as I was adjusting them even, and yeah, everything's nice and flush with the uh, top of the top plate, with the top of the table, with the floor, just because that bubble is dead on. Okay, so now we've got the suspension all tuned. Uh, we might have missed a lot of that because for some reason my phone keeps turning off. Um, I may have to come back and revisit them. I'm going to go and watch these and upload it to my computer because I think what's happening is I'm running out of memory or something. Okay, filmed moments after I did the uh, preamble video to this whole uh, part six series. Um, so yeah, I, I uh, ran out of time. It, I had to do a lot of uh, discussions and pointing out some things. Um, so the actual procedure of uh, calibrating and setting up the, uh, the bearings on this will have to wait till a further part six uh, that will be coming out shortly. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you got something out of it. Thank you.